Round 21, Teamless Tuesday. It is here. There are a few changes from the Sharks. But other than that, a lot of it is basically what we were expecting, which is really, really cool. And uh, obviously, yeah, when you get into one of the, a week like this where you potentially have a few Dolphins or something like that, then, uh, you know, with, with not many changes, you can really get that really strong 17 on the park and and look to build in towards the next bunch of rounds. And you know, as I said in that previous video, there's a few things to, to float around in terms of potential opportunities with certain guys and you know, certain potential cash outs and, and also, you know, the top guns there and is it worth kind of you know, getting a cash out to get one of the top guns like a pain house, like you see in the picture there or or a Cleary or, you know, Tedesco's in there, something like that, obviously. And and this round is not everything. Obviously, there's a lot to come and, and you can have a different strategy to, to someone else, really. Like a lot of people will be pushing to get that best 17 that they can on the park right now or maybe for the next three to four weeks. But just remember, a lot of people are using their full allotment of trades over the next few or, you know, they used four last week, they're using two this week and they might use one or two across your know, sort of round 22, round 23. And they're going to leave themselves with three to four rounds. Let's just say anywhere between two to four rounds, a lot of people will, will end up running out of trades. And, and if you have that extra couple coming into the last three or, you know, two to two to four rounds there, you're going to leave yourself in, in, you know, maybe you do miss out on a couple extra points in this week or the week after, but then you come into round 25, 26, 27, and you're able to really catch up and, and go past the guys that were trying to get past you uh, or trying to get further ahead of you in this last, in these few rounds right now. So when you look at the team list this week, when you're looking at your trades, have that in mind and just you know, set yourself forward into making sure that you get your a great 17. Might not be the best 17 exactly, but you can have a really good 17 for the entirety of the, the last seven rounds there. Uh, and the reason you see the, um, the the women's are on here as well, and you're seeing at the bottom of your fantasy NRL page screen there, the NRL Mixer. So Bund the, you know, sponsored by Bundaberg there, run by Bundaberg. It's not run by Motor, sponsored by Bundaberg. Um, yeah, you're picking the best three. So you get hooker, you get uh, mid, you get the edge position, you get half, center, and wing fullback. And what you actually get to do is, is select one, either in the women's competition or the men's competition there. And uh, yeah, try try luck at winning the weekly prizes. So that's what you're seeing at the bottom of your screen. It's a separate competition. It happened last year as well, and it's happening here in round 21, and it'll happen for the rest of the season, I believe. There, uh, going on, you see this at the bottom of your screen here on the right, but uh, it will come up on your fantasy page as well. So let's get into things down the bottom here. We have a few people returning for the Dragons which is going to be cool, I suppose, if you have Jack Bird, but he's also on the bench, so that's not very exciting there. Tyrell Sloan comes back into the one position there, so obviously Dragons were one of the teams had a bye last week, and they have Jaden Sua, who's injured. Dan Russell comes in and fills that spot. Uh, we don't see a Ben Medock Masilla this week at all. So Billy Burns keeps his spot. He scored really well last week, um, and then Dan Russell's there as well. So I see that as a bit of an advantage for Papali uh, and or Bateman on that one there. So Jaden Sua being on, what's that going to be? Is he going to be on the right? He would have been on the right. So is Dan Russell going to be on the right and Burns, Burns play on the left? Actually, I'll have to check that out, actually, as to where Billy played, because I imagine he'll keep his his same side. And you know, with guys like Isaiah Papali, I was talking about him last week as you know, potentially being the guy that I could use to go to a Cleary. Unless you are going to Cleary, I, I think it might be worth just holding off on, on trading Isaiah just because they are playing the Dragons. And you can get that one more look at him to see if he can, can come out and dominate and get back to some of his good form. Unfortunately, Brooks is still maybe another week away. And we saw with Dane Laurie out there a couple of weeks ago, it didn't actually help um, Papali, but surely after that try assist that he put through, they will uh, look to give him some more ball, surely. Uh, but nothing else really changes apart from Jake Simkin out for De Talon De Silva. So if you do have Simkin, uh, you can either hold him, obviously, because he's not playing, he's not going to lose you any cash, or you could definitely sell him if you like. But at that weird price, it's kind of hard to do that, I would say. And as I said, Jack Bird comes in on the uh, on the bench there this week. So going to play limited minutes. It was really weird. He played 80 minutes in New South Wales Cup last week. So that was a strange one. Um, David Nofaluma comes back and you lose Asuka Power. He ends up going to the reserves. Yeah, into the reserves. So he's straight out of this side, unfortunately. All right, let's get into Warriors and Raiders. As we said, guys, Dolphins have the bye this week. Metcalf still remains in the squad. We still don't see Tamati Martin. He's not in the reserves either. Josh Curran goes back to the reserves. And what you do see is Bunty Afoa come back in. Same with Murata Nikore. 
he comes in there as well. So Toa Harris had the uh, flu last week, which was yeah, a little bit annoying. So um, yeah, it didn't it didn't it's, it caused him to not score too well last week. But then from here, I think he'll be fine. So completely easily an option for you to to hold in your side to help you do really really well. He's definitely not someone that you should be clearly worried about in your sides, that's for sure. On this front, uh, Johnson, obviously a clear gun chance. You can do what you like with. Happy for you to sell or or hold with him. Corey Horsburgh, I think he's a, a guy that if you don't own yet, he's definitely someone you should be targeting. He's had a couple of weeks off now. He'll be completely ready to go. He didn't play a lot in Origin either, so he'll be uh, ready for some big minutes here. Again, in a really important game against the Warriors, so excited to watch him. In this one here, Matty Tomoko, if you need a center, he's definitely a solid option coming into this one as well, uh, along with Joe Tarpane. All right, so setting down from there, no one else in those ga that game to pick. Uh, Latrell Mitchell and, and Reese Walsh uh, are returning here. So if you're looking at a fullback this week, I would be looking at Latrell. I'd look at Teddy, uh, look at Garrick. They're probably the three that I suppose the majority of people, yeah, they're still, a, a, well, Garrick's are still a, at a lower ownership, but uh, Latrell. And Teddy, yeah, you know, Teddy's a lot of similar ownership to Garrick there. Latrell's the guy, if you want a bit of a game breaker, then he's your man. And he obviously has had a, a fair bit of time off now since, what, just before the first origin. So he has plenty of weeks now, getting closer to 10 weeks off, uh, which is actually actually ridiculous. So hopefully he comes back fit and firing. It might take may take him a couple of weeks to work into it. Uh, and, and that could be enough for you to just leave him out for this week there. Damien Cook is back, obviously. Cam Murray, a great selection this week if you're interested there for sure at eight fifty uh, at six fifty, which is actually crazy to say, considering he was uh, he's a couple hundred k under under where he was at the start of the year. Payne Haas returns, Pat Carrigan returns. I'd be going for Payne before I would be going for Patrick. Um, and if he held Payne through this, and then happy days. If you did sell him, I'm sure you're going to be closing your eyes when this game is on. Herbie Fine was still a good pickup in the centres. Remember, both these teams have a buy around twenty five. For the Broncos, round 26 for the Bunnies. Let's move on. Titans and Roosters. So Tino is out. And uh, a few people asked me in the comments who I thought would benefit. It seems like Aaron Clark will start. I'd say Chris Randall will still get pretty big minutes there. And Jacob Arlick comes on after scoring his uh, 60 or 50. 50, whatever he got in that first game that he played. So he'll come on to the bench. Or it'll be, um, you know, Isaac will come on as well. Um It could be. Yeah, and no one else in those reserves I really think is going to come on and get any time unless they play Aaron Shook. Our shop there. Uh, but yeah, Randall, I think, is going to be benefit, benefit, but he's fairly expensive in the hooking position. Aaron Clark would have liked this last week if he was to get some decent minutes. A uh, few people were looking at him as a bit of a cash down. Uh, but yeah, other than that, you know, Murphy Awake had played massive minutes already. I don't think that will, you know, he'll get any more minutes than he, than he has been anyway uh, on that front. And uh, AJ Brimson returns, which is cool. For the Roosters, Teddy comes back to fullback, Manu to center. Doesn't really change much, I said. As I said there, you got Nat Butcher. I expect a better game from him this week, so don't look to sell him. Um, yeah, that's basically it for them. Not too important. Um, Knights and the Storm. Not, nothing changes with, with the Knights there. Fitzgibbon's still a solid scorer. Adam Elliott, again, up and down as always. Tyson, Tyson Brazil will be a keeper on that edge, but do you want Fafita or do you want to go that little bit cheaper with someone like him? Greg Marzu, definitely a solid pickup. Up against the Storm this week should be a little bit tougher, though there. Up against the mighty Will Warbrickson. What a man. Um, yeah, you know, Harry Grant, a guy to pick up. Munster, obviously, as well. Nelson keeps a spot on the edge. There's no, si no sign of Eli Katoa yet, which is weird. Um, must have a real issue with that eye, unfortunately. Not exactly what you want there. Uh, let's move on, basically. You know, well, both of those teams don't have a buyer to come, so any of the top guns, go for it. Cowboys do have a buyer remaining, round 24, and then Eels are in 27, so... Keep that in mind and how many Cowboys and Eels you have before looking at a drink water, looking at you know, Lucy Lailua, looking, looking at a Ruben Cotter who should get back to some decent minutes this week. And he's definitely on a few people's radars, I believe, close to that 500K mark. And I can see why, but we did see last year that him and both him and Tamalolo, once it got into the actual finals, that's when their minutes really increased. And, the, and I don't see Todd Payton, uh, Todd Payton doesn't like to launch them into massive minutes until finals time. So if they're you know, it's interesting because they're a team that's not clearly in the top four or, or, you know, in the top five or six like they were last year. They're sitting just outside the eight and they will need a few of these guys to play big minutes and do really well. But I think it'll be game dependent. And if it's really close or if they need, you know, they need them to play the bigger minutes, they might. And if, and, and otherwise, they're just going to keep putting him on ice. So he could have a, a 65 point game and then he'll have a 33 point game or something like that, which will be frustrating to own, I think. 
in my opinion, and why I'd be I'd be leaving uh, them out. I think Ryan Madison will get some bigger minutes now with RCG gone. Uh, Ogden will start, but yeah, again, again, when you're looking at that interchange bench, Madison's going to be the only one that plays decent minutes. Ogden won't, so I think those extra minutes will get, be given to Maddo there. Hopgood should be able to get you know 60 minutes like he did last time, and he's very safe now. Dejan Asi had a, a really bad score. Uh, I think he will be able to bounce back, but do you want him in your side, or is he a mid-range guy that you can move on now? Penasini is solid hold. Same with Gutho, same with Moses at the moment as well. Nothing too much else to say. On those teams, we go to Panthers Dogs for our second last game, and and Dill Edwards is in there, and, and hopefully with the return of Nathan Cleary, which is awesome, that he will score a bit better. And a few people asked me about that as well, and I think he will. Uh, I doubt he can, you know, especially against the Dogs. There, I, I'd expect a, a big score from all of these guys. Obviously, some will really outperform, and some will be, you know, it could be randomly, um, you know. Brian Toto is the one that doesn't get a try or so, or Tarub is the one that doesn't, or, or Dylan Edwards doesn't have to get involved as much, and maybe he's the second to last pass guy and doesn't get the assist. So there'll be someone in this back line likely that doesn't get the spoils. It could be Edwards, it could be anyone. Obviously, maybe Isaac Tungo doesn't get all the, the spoils this one, and they cut him out, and or you know, kicks go to the wingers, or they score through the middle, something like that against these dogs. Um, yeah, so if you're looking at this, obviously Cleary should be really scoring well in that one. Uh, Sorensen still keeps his spot. Happy days on that front. Um, yeah, not too much else to say on that, on their side of the ball. If you want, Jacob Karaz in centre. Yeah, you know, he's at a, a, you know, 450 now, whatever it is. And uh, yeah, he's going to be fine. But against this team, not super excited on him. Flanagan comes into the seven. So Sexton being out, I think, just hurts the dogs that little bit more and gives Panthers another you know, another way of, of demolishing them. Max King keeps his spot, obviously, there. You've got Reed as a solid option as well. Should be able to make a lot of tackles in this one. And Preston's a hold there too. Uh, nothing much else to say on those guys. And the last one, the Sharkies have made some changes. So anyone who's Talakai, unfortunately, has been moved to the bench in place of Connor Tracy. So what well to Connor Tracy for sticking it out. He he's always plays really well in this side. I'm excited to see Trindle and Tracy together. They're the two big changes there. And uh, we'll see if Ronaldo can get um, yeah, some more involvement there because he's been, yeah, they've been demolished on that, that side defensively. And he's had no attack in the last few weeks either. So... Yeah, let's see if that uh, big change, dropping Moylan and moving Talakai to the bench. Obviously, he can play some middle, some edge. Um, probably will play some edge, I'd say. Splitting with Jesse Colhoun. So he's a, a, another cash down option you could look at as a starter. Should be able to play sorry, 45 to 50 minutes, I'd say. Maybe a 55 for him. And it could be a solid option for your side as a cash down that, that likely is going to get some game time yeah, on a week-to-week -week basis. Yeah, if they've gone with him now, I'd say that they'll stick with it. He could play 30-odd, and Talakai plays 50 as well. So it is it doesn't come without risk. And then if you're looking at the Manly guys, Garrick is obviously a really good one to, to look to grab in your side or, or hold. Uh, I think he can score pretty well this week. And, yeah, Olakua too is a hold. Trebojevic, the 50-point legend. Um, obviously, yeah, not really a buy either. But a hold, and then TCE, the only probably buy, along with Garrick in this side. So that's the team list, guys. Let me know um, if that was really helpful. I think I answered the majority of the questions there. And uh, yeah, good luck with making trades in your team. Get your team analysis stuff into the Discord. And um, yeah, just have a good week in general. And I'll see you in the next one.